In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a firework rocket farm. Let's start with the sugarcane farm. You can see the sugarcane in here being detected with the observer, which detects every time this has an update, which means that it's relatively consistent with the amount of times the piston pushes it. So whenever sugarcane grows, the piston should push it rather quickly, breaking it and letting it go into this hopper, which can then push its items down into this hopper and get sucked into the dropper that gets activated every so often whenever the clock runs. And if we go inside, you can see it just basically has the observer running up with some redstone up to these pistons so that it can push the sugarcane down and be able to fit in this tight space. There's not a whole lot of area here, like this is the biggest area that we can work with. Then we have these little areas for the creepers to go in. A few of these trapdoors do get activated when the clock goes, but on the lower floors it's less of a problem because we can have redstone blocks which activate them, which means that when they get another signal, despite the fact that this is what they look like when it's activated, we can just flip the trapdoor down and it will look just the same. The one under here is the only one that actually gets activated, but you don't need to worry about that one because right here isn't where any creepers will spawn anyways. In fact, you could just remove that trapdoor if you want to. The water activates based on this clock, which has a few competitors. It takes a tick to go through all of these. This will make the rest on signal a little less strong. And it'll just go through here, which makes it unactivate this torch, which activates the observer from the repeater. And then the torch will activate this, repeating the cycle again. And then that will shoot out the water from these dispensers, which will push off the creepers. And it takes just long enough to have the creepers fall off the edge. And even if any stragglers come, then we'll be able to shoot them off after the second round. But most of the ones on the edge should be able to get off the first round. And you can see that guy being pushed off now and falling into the hole. Where he goes into this tiny chamber that has a magma block. And whenever a creeper gets down here, then they'll die to the magma blocks and potentially drop their gunpowder if they have any. And then that will just be dispensed into the ground where we have some gunpowder and sugar cane and we can use that to make fireworks every so often. You can put a little collection chamber under here if you want to, to just get all the drops and then put it into like a firework chest and then be able to craft as many fireworks as you want to. Of course, no creepers will spawn until you actually finish the design. Mirror what we have going on here so that it looks consistent and just build up the patterns on this side. The outer design is based on a firework rocket. You can see how the stripes go like that, and it has the same ratio of 3 by 8, we just have 9 by 24 instead. And the hat looks pretty much the same as it would in real life with the ratio that we have here. I made the fuse be able to cover up the redstone here, which we need to dispense out the items onto the ground. But I also made it easy to mirror so you can just build this on the other side to have it consistent. But if you want to change up the design a little bit and make the fuse not symmetrical, that might look a little more natural. But I don't think it looks worse with it being less natural. These trapdoors on the sides are to prevent spiders from spawning, because if this build were fully fleshed out, then a spider could spawn right here. But with these trapdoors in place, no spiders can spawn, and it doesn't prevent the creepers from running off. How spider spawning works is that they need a 3x3 area with just one block here, so if there are no blocks here, then it would still be able to spawn. But since there is a hitbox there, that means they can't spawn there. And then we just have the slab in the middle so that they can't spawn on these areas. The magma here is optional because it doesn't really make it much less efficient if you don't have it. So if you're good with just collecting one magma block and leaving it there, then this will work as normal blocks because this only really does one or two hits to the creeper before it falls into the middle. Now this clock works is that whenever this comparator is activated, It'll go to here, where it pushes a piston, activating this observer clock, which goes through this block into this dropper. That way, any item that comes in the system will be dropped out of the system. This way, there doesn't need to be a constant dropper sound, which can get pretty annoying. The way we send the signals to the water is through this repeater, which every time it goes off or on, it'll make it update all of these observers. That did need to be a little more complicated than having, let's say, a hopper system going around the place, which I did try many times. The observers just didn't last long enough to have the water cover all of the edges. And I wanted this farm to be operable more than 50% of the time, so I made it so that the water only comes up every so often and turns off quickly. The signal gets sent down by simply just having redstone on top of all the observers, and then the observers go through a block because you can't just have an entire observer chain going down, or it wouldn't activate anything next to it. So it just sends the signal down through this block, and lets it travel all the way down to the bottom. And so it just has a nice clicky going from top 
to the bottom. You might be wondering why I have glass pillars here, and that's because of the water down here. It's difficult to get water to flow all the way to one central block if you have a weird circle shape, and here in this amount of space, it's pretty much impossible. The easiest thing to do is just have the water flow in three directions or four when you build up the whole thing. The reason I didn't want to have cats is because although creepers will get scared of cats and run off on their own, they need blocks on the other side to pathfind to. So for example, this would work because the creeper can pathfind to this block. But if you remove that segment, that means that the creeper has nowhere to pathfind to, so it just stays on the trap door and doesn't do anything. So I figured water would be our next best bet. And although it took a while, I was able to get a design down that worked well in the little area that we have here. This farm took a long time to design, so I'd appreciate it if you subscribed if you enjoyed the video and might find this farm useful. Anyways, that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!